Hello again, this is Blaster Toad here with another Unreal 4, Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. So, last video, uh, we went over creating a creature or an enemy that would follow you when you're not looking at it. Okay, this was requested at, through a private message on our Facebook page. The same gentleman that requested that also requested a door that you open with a um, axes input. So instead of just clicking a button to open a door, you actually control the opening and closing of the door. So let's go and make that door. Should be fun. So first things first, I want to go over to my player. And again, we're just in my gun soccer set up where a bunch of things have been happening and it's been getting messy. Wow, I should really clean this up. Um, what does that even do now? I was trying to make something and it didn't work and okay. I've got a bunch of blueprints that don't mean anything and they're gonna go away. Goodbye blueprints. Okay. So what we are going to do is on our mouse X, we are going to run a branch, okay? So whether this is a direct mouse X reference for yourself or whether you have a proper axes reference, uh, either or this can be done. So we're actually gonna move it aside so it's not near anything else. I'm gonna have to make a new project to start doing these tutorials in. Things are getting messy, okay. So, we've got our mouse X, which right now controls the yaw of our player, so the looking side to side. So what we're gonna do is set up a branch here, and off the true side of the branch, we are going to add local rotation, okay? So we're going to add local rotation, right like that. And break that link, there we go, and we're going to get rid of that. Okay. So, now we need a couple of variables. First variable we need is going to be a boolean, so we can just right click here and promote to variable. Bring that down, and this new variable we are going to call door flag so it is a flag that when it is raised says yes you are controlling a door when it's not raised we are controlling the look movement of our player okay uh the other thing we have to do is off here our target we need to also promote to variable and this here we will call our door target target there we go and off our axis value, we are going to get a make rotator. There we go. So we're going to move all this up. Move that over there. You know how on all my other tutorials, I'm like, hey, make sure everything's pretty and nice and not spaghetti everywhere. Comment stuff so you don't end up with code like that, that you don't know what it does. And I have to go back later and find out whether I can delete it or not. Awesome. Okay, so. Come in. We've got add rotator. And we are going to add a yaw rotation to our door target. Okay? And that is it for the player. Really simple. So let's go over and make a door. Oh, I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so we're going to go over and we're going to make a door. So let's get a new door target, blah, blah, blah. Yes, there is no door target yet. Um, oh, right now, door target is set to true. Door target needs to be set to false. And there we go. No, don't play. I'm in such a habit of doing that. Okay, so we are now going to do a new blueprint of actor class. And this is going to be our um, mouse mouse move door. 
I'll just wait for the big snowplow to go away. Okay, so we got mouse move door. Okay, and we're going to pull it out here so that I can see it as I'm building it. Okay. And on our mouse move door, we are going to add a cube. Because we always add a cube. It's like tradition. And we're going to make our cube a door-like cube. Okay. Sure, that should be door like enough. Let's go see compared to our player what size this is. Oh, yeah, the player will be able to get through that. Should be able to anyway. Let's just double check. Oh, yeah, the player can pass through that. That is like the perfect size, smallish door. Okay, let's make it a little bigger. The perfect size, smallish door that's not so perfectly sized, otherwise I wouldn't have to resize it. And there we go. Just a little bigger. And I like that better. Okay. And now we're going to do control C, control V, because that way I can just come over and make us a door frame. And I'm using W to translate, R to scale, and E to rotate. We're going to control C, control V again, hit W for translation, and we're going to bring that over. And then we are going to control C, control V again, and do E for rotation. And then we are going to move that over and then R to scale. Really? It's not gonna get let me get a nice door topper? Oh well. There is our actually, there's our door. Perfect. We have a door. Now what we need to do for our door is make a hinge. Because right now it's going to spin on its center. So we are going to actually name our door. And then we are going to add a arrow. That's what we're going to do. We're going to add an arrow. Okay. And this arrow is going to be there. And... There. Why did I make the side of the door facing forward? I do not know, but that is what I did. Okay, and then that's our hinge. We're now going to take our door and parent it to that arrow so that when we rotate the arrow, hey, look at that. We've got a door that rotates like it's on a hinge. Go figure. So again, to get that parented, I just dragged and dropped on it. I can also drag and drop on out here to move that around. Okay. Oh, I don't want that. Whatever, that doesn't matter, as because I'm only going to be doing the arrow. Okay. Now, uh, let's go back to our player, because I think I made a mistake. We're going to open up player. Scene component. Nope, that's perfect. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do in our door is we are going to make a box component. Everybody knows how much I love these collision boxes. Boxes are good. So we're going to click out here on our collision box. Come on, collision box, damn you. Fine, we'll do it this way. And we are going to do that, and we're going to do that, and we are going to do that. Okay, so if we're within this zone, then we are going to be controlling the door. Then we're going to scroll down, and we are going to do the on begin overlap. And we're going to select our box, and we're going to do the on-end overlap. Okay. 
So now we are going to cast to layer. Okay, and get our other actor. We then want to, as player, set door flag and also set door target. Okay. So our door flag will be set to true. And our door target, and we'll straighten that out, will be set to the arrow. Because we are wanting to rotate our hinge. Okay. How's that? Then when we leave the zone, we want to copy that. Cast to the actor leaving the zone and turn door flag off so that we can move around as per normal. And let's try this, see if this works for us. But we are going to get rid of our monster that's chasing us because that could be a little bit annoying right now. And we're going to move our door over there. So I actually have to go to it and let's play. Okay, come over to our door. And then I've moved my mouse and it opens the door and then I walk through and as soon as I'm past and if I walk into the zone again and I move my mouse. Oh, there we go. And then I can walk out again so we can come on, close the door and walk away. That is that. That's a kind of an interesting puzzle. To be walking around a horror game and have to be like, oh no, I've got to close the door. Wait, damn it, I have to like stand right here and then like wiggle my mouse. And did I close? No, I opened it too far. And okay, there we go. Whoo, the door is closed. Oh crap, it's coming through the door. Let's run, run, run. Yeah, that could be an interesting, interesting horror game. Add that little bit of tenseness, a little bit of a weird control. Do, 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 do. Uh, there's other ways to do this so that you would do it on an action prompt. So you'd run up, uh, it would put a prompt on your screen, you'd hit your action key and then wiggle your mouse. But I like this better that you just walk into the area and you move your mouse to open the door. Uh, it makes things a little bit more frantic and if you're trying to look behind you, you end up like swinging the door open and pushing yourself out of the way, which I find is a little bit amusing as well. So yeah, that is the door. Let's go back and do a brief walkthrough on how we did this again. So we're going into our player. Uh, on our mouse movement, so our side to side, or you could do your up and down, either or. Um, either as a direct access like this, or whether you have a proper axis map, either or works. After that, we're gonna run a branch and we're gonna check whether we are flagged to do the door thing. If we are not flagged to do the door thing, we are going to move and look around as per normal. If we are flagged to do the door thing, we are going to add a local rotation. Okay, so we take our axis value, put it through a rotator, and add local rotation to the door target. Okay, the door flag and the door target are set by our door actor, so we will go over there. So on our door, we have our door piece, come on, our door piece, our hinge, which is just an arrow down at the bottom, and because it's all parented together, when that hinge rotates, the door rotates properly, versus if I rotate the door directly, it would have just rotated like this. That would have been a hilarious blooper for the video though, wouldn't it? Okay. So we've got our door set up on a hinge axis and we have our collision box. On our collision box begin overlap, we get the actor that's overlapping and cast to make sure it is a player. If it is a player, then we set the door flag to true. You're gonna be doing something with the door player. And we set the door target to arrows. We set it to our hinge. So we're directly manipulating the hinge, okay? Then when we leave the door box, that overlap box, we cast to the player and say, don't do the door flag. 
And that way it's saying, okay, we aren't doing that anymore. Look around like normal. So that is that. I hope you've all enjoyed this shortish video on how to make a door that you open and close with your mouse input. I, I kind of like that. That's, that's interesting. If this guy who requested this isn't doing a horror game with this, I'm going to be highly disappointed. Oh, you may want to make yourself a rotational clamp there because you can spin the door all the way around. But I'm going to let you figure that one out yourself. Okay, but that's it. We've got a door we walk into and we open and close with mouse movement. Oh, that is kind of weird. I love it. Players would get so pissed off as they're running around a house and have to be like, How do I open the door? There's no buttons. Oh, I'm going to look behind me. Oh, no. I'm going to look. Wait, what? The door's... Oh, damn it. I got to get back here and come back and open the door and get through and then, like, turn around and close the door and freaking zombies and whatever. And... Yeah. I could see that being a good time. I wouldn't want to play a game like that. So I kind of wanted to make a game like that for other people so that they can feel that. <laughs> anyway, that is another tutorial here by Blaster Toad on how to do a door that you open and close with your mouse movement. Thank you for the suggestions, and if anybody else has something they want to see built here or quickly demonstrated, please let me know either via our Discord chat, via a comment on one of the YouTube videos, or through our Facebook or Twitter. All the links are in the description below. Uh, yeah, I hate doing this, it's a bit of a grovel thing, but hey, if you've liked it, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It does help the videos get noticed a bit more, or a lot more, actually. And then that way I get more suggestions and I can make more stuff. So, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.